This is Vivaldi. Oh, I love the classical music. It's she's above them. She's more lofty than them. She's more sophisticated. She doesn't even have to fight them. I'm getting fates from this. I'm getting Greek fates. The personification of destiny is the Moirai, the daughters of Nyx. They weave the silk of fate. Classical music is not as common anymore right, in our modern world. She's something from a bygone era. Who is this character, man? Time marches on. Destiny marches on. You can't escape it. And that's why this is a reference to No Country for Old Men. It is the illusion of choice. It's the illusion of free will. Hello, my name is Philip. I'm known for my filmmaking in China. And you may have also seen some of my documentary work. Today, we're going to be watching and reacting to Kafka Trailer, a dramatic irony, Hongkai Star Rail, and analyzing the cinematic language. We've seen a little bit of Star Rail so far, and I've very much enjoyed what MiHoYo has put together for this game, Cinematics. So this should be very interesting. Make sure to watch my other work that I've done on Honkai Star Rail already, and we've got a little bit of a look at Kafka just in the original trailer for this game. And as always, you lore experts, let me know in the comments some context that'll help me understand this character a little bit better. Or if there's something I might have missed. And of course, let me know in the comments, will you be pulling for Kafka? All right, MiHoYo, let's see what you've cooked up for us today. A nice first shot. Ooh, there's a lot more depth of field, shallow depth of field, I should say, than we usually get with MiHoYo right off the bat, so I love it. More film tools. Ooh, very nice edit. Listen to me. Wasn't it you? Oh, this is, uh... Yes! This is Vivaldi. <laughs> yes, they used this in John Wick 3 as well. Looks like we're gonna get a similar scene here, maybe. Oh, I love the classical music. It's She's above them. She's more lofty than them. She's more sophisticated. She doesn't even have to fight them. Awesome. Perfect. Unless you are yeah. more fragile than the silk. Case in point. More fragile than the silk. This is, I'm getting fates from this. I'm getting Greek fates. The Morai. If you don't know. Oh, this is so John Wick as well. The choreography. It's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, she, she doesn't even have to look at them. She's more sophisticated. She's higher. And the Vivaldi, the classical music, is working so well for that. Ooh. Why does it choose to wear this one? I, I said it. I said it. I said the fates, uh, the Greek fates, destiny. Um, the, the, the personification of destiny is the Moirai, uh, daughters of Nyx in Greek mythology, and they, they weave the silk of fate, the threads of fate. So this, this is obviously a reference to that. It's beautiful. Uh, we have this silk that she's using as a weapon, but then this particular shot stood out to me. It's almost like she is destiny. She is the silk, and it's, you know, it's branching off from her. And it's like, if you were to see her true form, this would be the terror that you were to behold, you know? I love that. And, uh... Faces. Why does it choose to wear this one? This is a really cool shot, too. Uh, why does it choose to wear this one? Faces. Why does it choose... This... Did you see this? This looks like a spider. All right, and how cool is that as sort of a, a multi-layered reference? Silk. Spider weaves silk, right? So it's almost like fate is a spider. Her true form is this monstrous being. Um, a spider that, that weaves silk. So I wonder if that'll come into it later in the story. Let me know if it has. One. Yeah. Spider eyes. Really nice shots here. We're going to break a lot of this down. It's beautiful. Ooh, intermission, it says. Again, maybe reference to a classical concert. I love this. Is this like Oniric structure? Ooh. As for the ending, wanna take uh. a guess? Oh. Wait. <laughs> this is Yeah, this is a reference to No Country uh, for Old Men by the Cohen brothers. Uh, Javier Bardem says, Call it. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Elias just brought me breakfast. Look at this. Is she not the best? Who doesn't like breakfast while they make a video? Thank you so much, my love. Anyways, uh, No Country for Old Men, Coen Brothers, have you seen it? Call it. You have to call it. That's that's what this is. Um, she's fate, she's destiny, is the illusion of choice, is the illusion of free will, but of course, she is, she is all powerful. Yeah, I like this, like, thrumming distortion. It's a, it, yeah. Tales. What's your answer? Awesome. Absolutely love it. 
one of the best miHoYo videos I've seen in a long time. Actually, I think one of the best period. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. Guys, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of this and check out my other videos. Um, also follow on Twitch if you want to chat live. This is amazing. Let's go back and look at it. All right, let's see. So right off the bat, we have this lovely... Usually Mihoyo doesn't really use too much of a shallow depth of field. What do I mean by that? So it means that uh, a particular part of the image will be in focus. And uh, for example, the background is out of focus and this subject is in focus at this time. <clears throat> that is uh, it's something that I don't do too often. And it's something that I'm always like, come on, give us more of that. It's, it's raising the sophistication of this piece because they're using more tools. And they do use it, but sometimes it's quite subtle. And they'll usually have the aperture just super, super opened up so you can see, or I should say closed off, so you can see um, everything is in focus. But this is really beautiful. And it's like shoot on sight. Uh, you know, what does that tell us? Right away, it's okay, this is a, number one, a dangerous person. And number two, a wanted and known threat. What do you see? Which is really cool. This this kind of distortion. This is a, this is a lovely edit. Uh, again, sort of, what do you see? And we see the eye. We see this insect. That almost looks like a moth or a spider within the iris. Um, again, another eye images. And this is the guy seeing his own death before it happens. It's kind of creepy, right? So again, like fates, more eye. What don't do you be see? Afraid. <clears throat> then she says, "Don't be afraid." Listen to me. Wasn't it you who invited me? <sighs> Wasn't it you who invited me? Look at that. And, and there's that spider imagery again. I hadn't seen it before, but she does actually have a web on her uh, on her hand, which I think is super cool there. So yeah, very very well done. <clears throat> and then of course we have the the Valdi. Wanted Kafka, and for a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, it's super cool. And they seem to do that with the Star Rail characters, don't they? They, they have the Wanted, and how much uh, each time, which is really cool. Just a beautifully, just a beautiful image too. Looks like a painting. Um, they're very, very aesthetic with the Star Rail ones. I've noticed. A lot of great shots here, man. A lot of great transitions too. Um, yeah. And again, this is the shot where I instantly was like, oh, this is awesome. The reason they chose this classical feel uh, with the music is because, number one, like she's beyond them. Like she's more sophisticated. They're using their like savage weapons there, you know, and she's just walking through with her like, you know, web of fate, threads of fate, just destroying them. And uh, she also uses like katana. You know, it's this it's this older ancient weapon that's not really used anymore. Right. And that's why it's cool. It's classical music. Um, Classical music is not as common anymore right, in our modern world. So it's really cool. It's like she's a little bit foreign in that respect. She's something from a bygone era. Uh, but at the same time, I'm really glad that they have this music in here because more people need to hear it. <laughs> yeah, this is a cool remix too. It's, you know, sometimes remixes, I actually like this a lot better than the, the take on the song from John Wick. Um, John Wick was cool as well, but this is, this is letting the, the instruments be more front and center, and it's a little bit more faithful. Really nice edit there to the beat, yeah. And I like, she's, she's almost conducting. She's almost playing the piano. Do you see that as she's walking? Closing her eyes. Again, that was a great shot. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do that frame by frame. Just a beautiful shot as she, boom, and we get this. We pull right through all the subjects. Again, a shot that's essentially impossible to do in real life. It'd be super hard. Depends on how close we clip. Uh, we actually go through this guy kind of <laughs> on his shoulder. Yeah. It'd be very difficult to do, but it makes for a super cool image. And then there's that, yeah, distortion and it's like flower petals almost. Some beautiful imagery going on here, guys. The silk is too fragile. Now this was interesting too, and this is why I get the Fates uh, Moirai sisters in this, because it's like she's almost sleeping in the silk again. Spider imagery. Fate imagery, like a hammock. And there's, there's the spider again. Did you see that? Yeah, it's another spider. Very, very cool. Yeah, creepy man. So what? Who is this character? Unless you're more fragile than the silk. Case in point. Who is this character, man? Like, what powers does she possess? She is fate itself. Holy mama. Right, we gotta go back. Than the silk. So. This is the sort of John Wick uh, uh, segment, as I like to call it, uh, which is a big compliment. This is awesome. Uh, and I love this kind of 
this is the, the, also a lot of music that's in John Wick sounds like this. This sort of like, you know, high energy. Yeah, there's some great choreography here as well. See this guy, uh, she shows the sort of casual nature that she's avoiding them. She's doing like, you know, a freaking runway walk over here. Dodges it so easily and just blasts them. And it's cool because they're not showing blood. They're showing this flower petals, which a lot of people might see as blood. But yeah, uh, it keeps it, you know, obviously keep the rating down, but it gives this sort of visceral feeling to it. And just brutality, right? Just kneecaps him, blast him in the back of the head. Just very John Wick feeling, right? Kind of like breaking down your opponents. Um, yeah, jumping off the wall and everything. It's awesome, man. We got the clock. This is a really nice uh, takedown, too. Yeah. Goes with the just... Yeah, spins him around after that kick. And it makes for a beautiful shot. Makes for a really beautiful shot if we go through that slowly. Yeah. Uses the the kick as a throw actually again and then and then blasts him. But I want you guys to note how she's not looking at the guy she shoots. Uh, again, very John Wick, but also it just shows the she's outclassing them so much, and that's cool. Again, like what do we think when we think class? Uh, we think classical, right? We think classical music, and it's so cool that they have that. I mean, she's wearing like you know overcoat. Oh, that was a really cool one too. Let's check this out so we can appreciate it. Uh, look at this. Yeah, she does almost like a. She does like almost like a raise, which is a martial arts tricking move, and like goes backwards and blasts these two guys uh, spinning right between them. That's awesome. And now she's using two weapons like that. Yeah. Great shot there. And this this is an example of good storyboarding, good editing, because look at how the sound design, or actually the music in this case. Look how they use the song. As she spins, boom, we get this kind of deep. Yeah, and you see it's almost, it's a distorted image, but it's cool because it kind of functions as her perspective, but it just shows like how crazy the moves that she's doing are. And I love this. This feels like something out of like old, old 90s anime, this shot selection. It's like upside down, you know, boom, old 90s anime, which is funny because a lot of people say, oh, Matrix, but you know, the Matrix is heavily inspired by 90s anime, right? So boom, there you go. Two, so the clock is going, it's going down as she's going through this too, which I love. Anyways, beautiful sequence. I wanted to take our time through that one and really, really appreciate each shot and it did not disappoint. There's a lot to glean from that. Yeah. And again, I, I love how for most of the video, she's casually, slowly, marching yeah she's fate like time marches on destiny marches on you can't escape it and that's why this is a reference to no country for old men by the cohen brothers why does it choose they're, to wear this? they were really smart to do that and there's the spider eye again that's an interesting shot she like just jets through there i love the stance again classical classical kind of uh mashing of worlds together right we have classical music with a woman wearing very modern fashion, wielding a katana, right? It's just like this crazy uh, hodgepodge of, of worlds. But what do all these things have in common? It's like that class, right? Like a samurai is not like a random bandit on the street, right? A, sam a samurai is a, is a lofty warrior who has codes and serves a greater lord and everything, right? And we have her, her fashion. Is a, it's expensive, right? <laughs> it's, it's exclusive. Uh, and then we have the music. It's classy, right? It's from, a, it's from a time past. You know, she's got she's got culture. She's got culture if she's listening to this music. And that, that's what I love about it. It's like she's uh, she's more cultured than them. She's higher up. Where this one. Look at that. She's just... Boom. Disperses them. Yeah, and there's that spider web again. I really like this. This, one. this may be one of my favorite segments here. This is great too. So this is a technique that's used a lot in Final Fantasy VII, Advent Children, and it was also used in one of the Final Fantasy XIV trailers. Um, oh, the katana changed, by the way. It's a different katana. It's red now. Uh, this is a technique they use where they'll, they'll crank out a really wide angle. Uh, in this case, this might even be like a 15 millimeter. Super, super opened up image. Um, it's just not distorting the edges with uh, some, some distortion. So that would mean, it, yeah, it's probably a 15 millimeter. Anyways. What they're doing is they're showing, you know, the length of the katana 
Um, I actually might have pulled this in a little bit closer to the edge of the frame here, and uh, they did do a bit of an angle, but I would have turned the camera a little bit more. Uh, you can roll the camera a little bit more to, to have this so it goes right down to this corner and it would have made a beautiful, beautiful composition. But this is still very good. Anyway, it's a technique they use a lot in uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Final Fantasy XIV, when, when people wield katanas. And it's beautiful because katana has this curved shape. It just makes for a oh, very, very aesthetic image. But yeah, this is one of my favorite images here. Watch what happens. We circle around it like, oh, we do cut actually. There's a cut snuck in there. Yeah, I thought it was one shot. Okay. Yeah, we circle around it. Boom. It's just such a cool shot. She's going to pull the threads. Yeah. And then we see this guy's fate unfolding in front of him here. Stealing a glance. Okay. So what was that? We got to look back at this. Hold on now. What in the world is this? Is this like her true form or something? Or is that the guy? I think it's the guy. Yeah. Stealing a glance. I think it's him like caught in the web. That's a great cut, well, a great transition. Dealing a glance. Oh, such a beautiful yeah, transition Where into this just smorgasbord of destruction. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Why did it say MacGuffin? Hey, look at this. Now then. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. Let's go back. Now. Again, Dealing it's just so cool because a lot of these shots are impossible to do in real life. I was about to say. Look at this, so we spin around, and now we enter into the shot of her. It starts as a close-up, actually like an extreme close-up. And then we have this just beautiful spinning. And again, it's like she's dancing, like she's doing ballet or something like that. Right? And then we come back to the same uh, extreme close-up. Like a full rotation, it keeps going, and it keeps spinning. Yeah. Did she say boo? Oh, she said boom, I think. Yeah, and there's the spider. See, the cracks in the floor are actually the spider, yeah. Beautiful. Sooner or later, the curtain has to fall. Yeah. Yeah, it says, it says some interesting things. Like, oniric structure. Oniric, uh, oniric means dream in Greek, I believe. Correct me on that if anybody's Greek. MacGuffin is like a... Uh, a plot point that, or an item that uh, has a plot point, but kind of like is, is irrelevant by itself. Non-linear structure. Okay, so I think I think what they're doing here is just showing, uh, like she's controlling the plot, right? Like she is fate. She's controlling destiny. I think is what they're going for here. And then Finn, end of course. Sooner or later, the curtain has to fall. As for the ending. Yeah. Wanna take a guess? But that's it. That's the that's the call it. Has anyone seen No Country for Old Men? You know what I'm talking about? I love it. Uh it's scary, it's terrifying. It's like I does he live or die, essentially. Um I love it. Very awesome. And I think that's the ending. Yeah. Yeah, this shot. Again, a very very John Wick feeling, right? Right here. This with with the umbrella it feels like they're in the continental or something, right? It's awesome. <laughs> What's your answer? What's your answer? Awesome. I think it's fantastic. She's a, a scary character. I'll tell you that. Really scary character. Uh, scary character. And again, if you guys know the lore, if she is indeed, uh, you know, representative of destiny or the fates, uh, the Moirai in Greek, that's super cool. I'd love to hear more. So please let me know in the comments what the deal is with that. But definitely one of my favorite MiHoYo videos. Uh, the music is top notch. Uh, I love that they that they did a a different a new take a remix on a a, a classical piece like that. It's awesome, and also uh, I think it's fantastically done. Definitely one of the best edits. Definitely one of the best. Uh, just everything. The whole shot selection is is very well crafted. And I think there's a ton of storyboarding done here, and also you can just tell they had a ton of fun with it. But I think its main influences are No Country for Old Men, John Wick. And, uh, of course, Greek. But I love it. You guys are the best. Thanks for watching. And uh, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more. Stop over on Twitch. Follow on Twitter to see some of my cosplay and other stuff like that. And have a lovely day.